Hey Aggies, all right, so I am going to show you guys how to work out the remaining problems on your mission three review. So let's take a look at number nine. So number nine says a new grocery store is opening next week. Be sure you look at the top directions also. It does, it does say solve using a model or equation, show your work and write your answer as a statement. That's a key point right there. You wanna be sure to write your answer as a statement. Let's look at letter A. The store's rectangular floor is 21 meters long and 32 meters wide. How many square meters of flooring do they need? Use estimation to assess the reasonability of your answer. Now, I went ahead and I listed area equals length times width because think of a floor that's in a store. So let's say you shop at Stater Brothers, Albertsons. Think of that rectangular floor as just being the rectangle that we normally draw for the area model. You know the length and you know the width. So we can plug in the length and the length and the width to get the area. So here's the picture that I went ahead and I drew without showing you guys too much of the answers. 21 and 32. We went ahead, I went ahead and I multiplied them. So let me show it to you right here. I use the same standard algorithm only because it's a little bit easier um, and saves me a little bit of time. So one times two gives me my two and one times three gives me three. I add my zero as my placeholder. Two times two is four, and then two times three is six. Add both of my partial products together, and I get 672. Be sure you're listing your answer as a statement. So the store needs 672 square meters of flooring. Let's take a look at the next one. The store ordered small posters and large posters to promote their opening six times as many small posters were ordered as large posters. If there were 42 large posters, how many more small posters were ordered than large posters, okay? So I know they ordered 42 large posters and I know that they ordered six times as many smaller posters. So all I need to do is set up my equation as small posters is 42 times six. You can solve it any way you would like. You can stack it like a Pringle. You can use a place value chart, whatever it is you need to do. So I went ahead and I multiplied 42 and six. Six times two gives me 12, so two goes here, and I added my one up top. Six times four is 24, don't forget to add that one. 252 posters, that's how many small posters they, uh, they ordered but it's asking me how many more small posters were ordered than large posters. I know there were 42 large posters. I know there were, sorry, 42 large posters ordered. There's 252 small posters ordered. So I can take those two numbers and I, I can subtract them to determine how many more smaller posters were ordered. 2 minus 2 is 0, and 5 minus 4 is 1. 2 minus 0 gives me 2. So the store ordered 210 more posters. Awesome. Let's look at letter C. Uniforms are sold in packages of four. The store's 62 employees will each be given five uniforms. How many packages will the store need to order? So I'm thinking, okay, 62 employees. Employee number one needs five uniforms. Employee two needs five uniforms. All the way till I get to employee 62, who also is going to need five uniforms. Well, how many uniforms do we need all together? I could take 62 and I can multiply it by five. And 62 times five is gonna tell me how many uniforms I need to order. Five times two gives me 10, so zero goes here. One goes right here, I'm gonna circle. Five times six gives me 30. Add my one, I have 31. So I know that the store needs to order 310 uniforms. But my question is asking me, how many packages does the store need to order? And I know that they come in packages of four. So to figure out how many packages, I need to take 310 and I need to divide it by four. I went ahead and I set it up using the long division method. I'm going to see four. Does it go into three? Definitely not. So I'm going to go ahead and divide it into 31. 
So I'm thinking four times seven gets me really close to 31. Four times seven is 28. I went ahead and I subtracted 31 minus 28, which gives me three. Go ahead and draw your arrow down. Now you have 30. Four times what number gets you very close to 30? That's right, it's gonna be seven. And seven times four gives you 28. 30 minus 28 gives you two. So you actually are gonna have a remainder of two. However, all of your 62 employees, they still need those uniforms. They're still gonna need those two. So you can't just order those 78 packages. You're gonna have to order 78 packages since you still have those two employees that need some left. So you're still gonna have to bump it up and order 78 packages, okay? That's gonna be a question you're gonna wanna pay very close attention to because if you do have that remainder, you're gonna to wanna to bump your answer up one more. All right, let's take a look at your last and final question. This one is really fun because it talks about factors. And you probably may not have realized it. So let's take a look. There are three numbers for the combination to the store's safe. The first number is 10. The other two numbers can be multiplied together to give a product of six. So really, it just wants, to, wants you to tell the factors. If two numbers are multiplied together, those give you the factors. What are all of the possibilities for the other two numbers? Write your answers as multiplication equations and then write all of the possible combinations to the safe. So I have two things I need to do. I need to write the multiple, multiplication equations that are gonna give me a product of six and I have to write all of the possible combinations to the safe. So I'm thinking of all of the factors of six, and I know that six is a composite number, so I'm gonna have definitely more than two. In fact, my factors for six are one, two, three, and six, and here are my multiplication equations. One times six gives me six, and six times one gives me six, three times two gives me six, and two times three gives me six. So those are going to take care of my multiplication equations. Now I need to write all of the possible combinations to the safe and I have to remember that 10 is my first number. Cannot change it, it has to be 10. So one of the possibilities I can have is going to be 10, 1, and 6 and I'm just pulling them from my equation. My next combination has to start with 10, and it's gonna be six and one. Again, just using my equations. My next one has to start with, you're right, 10, and it can be three and two. And my final possible combination is going to be 10, two, and three. Notice I can't start switching my threes with my sixes because then they are not factors of six. All right, guys, go ahead and get started with your studying. Make sure you study tonight for your test. That's tomorrow. Make sure you gather all your notes so you are ready to take your assessment tomorrow morning.